Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another mod update for the week talking about the stuff we've been working on for the past week and this time I'm joined by Pig. Hello. Yeah. Uh, today we're going to be showing off some of the progress on the attachment pack and if we have time a little sneak peek at some other stuff we've been working on. Now this is much like the title says one of the biggest attachment pack updates that we've shown pretty much ever. Last time we left off on the hunting rifle and as some of you knew we were going to be moving on to the radium rifle. Well we did a whole lot more than that. We're crazy going to be show <laughs> crazy how I'm much gonna more. interrupt you all the time. Yeah, you're gonna interrupt me. It's fine. Uh <laughs> we're gonna be showing off today the radium rifle, broadsider, fat man, harpoon gun, and railway rifle. Railway rifle. Five guns instead of the typical one. Usually we only ever get one to two done for one of these videos, but we actually kicked a little bit of ass last week and we got a whole lot done, not to mention some extra stuff on the side. So we're going to be showing off a lot today. So since we have so many weapons to showcase today, I figured the best thing to do is to just jump right in and talk about what we've done, starting with the radium rifle, which was the next best vote in the poll that we made not too long ago. So with the radium rifle, we wanted to lean into the Children of Adam and the radiation damage, as well as some other elemental effects that we had a little bit of fun with. Uh, we also opted for some rechambers to give this thing a little bit more functionality in combat, and surprisingly, this thing is now pretty effective. It was a little bit lackluster in Far Harbor's DLC, but now with some of these attachments, it's a pretty good contender in the late game. I find it it's, it's pretty fun now. I'm a big fan. So yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and check this thing out over at the weapons workbench so we can show off every single thing that we've done to this weapon. So, as is typical fashion for the attachment pack, we don't have much to show in the way of receivers. This thing's already got a pretty good allotment. As you can see, it's a pretty lengthy list, so not much to add there. But we do, however, have some pretty cool options for the barrel category. So, in vanilla, we've got standard and the long barrel, but now we have the addition of a suppressed barrel, just like some of the other attachments in the attachment pack. I really like how it extends the lines of the regular tube there. It's a pretty cool design, and it even gives you a more functional front sight that was kind of missing on the base one. We may do some retextures to this because the metal doesn't quite match, that's something we're still deciding. But you could let us know in the comments what you think. Uh, then we have the vented barrel, which adds a nice sort of cheese grater to it, as well as some extra gamma gubbins to help with the Children of Adam theme of the visual aesthetic of this thing. Yeah, I think the uh, heat shield really amplifies the World War II and then it brings it together with the Children of Adam cells on there. As Pig puts it, this is his favorite. Yeah. Uh, we also have a bull barrel, which is sort of a modification of one of Pig's concepts he gave to me, which adds even more gamma gubbins, helping boost not only the base damage, but also the radiation damage that this thing can deal. Then we have the electrified barrel, which is going to add that nice little bit of elemental damage. Ignore this weird looking shape at the front here. That's just sort of what it looks like in the preview menu. When you take this in game, it actually has some animated electricity at the front, which is pretty cool with the combination of the duct tape fusion cells here. I think it really fits this weapon's aesthetic. Yeah, we tried to go more like a tinker had his way with this weapon, just to make it more fun and different kind of elemental stuff. Yeah, I think the goofy vibe kind of works with the Children of Adam, as they're already making a regular gun into a gamma rifle. So I think this is totally something that's in their wheelhouse. We also have to match the electrified barrel and incendiary barrel, which has a nice little tank. And as you can see, uh, an ignition module at the front here as well, which yep. will give you that little bit of incendiary damage and as is the case for both of these barrels you cannot put muzzles on but you can't put muzzles on the rest of these well it's part of the uh suppressed barrel yeah moving on we also have the finned barrel which was my idea to throw some of the pipe gun aesthetic onto here and i think it fits pretty well I even cut out the bottom here for the reciprocating barrel just to add some weight and recoil control and i think it's a, a pretty cool fit the fins are very yeah. world war ii just like the base rifle and then the ported barrel is, of course, vanilla. Moving on to the stocks, we've got some familiar faces. We have the salvage stock, which you may have seen in the hunting rifle video, straight up from Fallout 3, the one that we recreated for the pack. We also have the makeshift stock borrowed from the radium, nope, the laser, laser musket. musket. The laser why musket. That's why, that's why Pig's here. He corrects me. Uh, then we have the short, full, and marksman and recoil compensating stock from the vanilla game, as well as the newly added comfort stock, which adds a nice little cheek pad for you, a reinforced stock borrowed from the railway rifle, and then the sniper stock, which we made for the combat rifle. Funny enough, this one has been made for the combat rifle, but I don't think it's shown up in a video yet, because we haven't talked about the combat rifle in a video yet, so that'll come. It'll get done eventually. That'll, yeah. that'll come in the future. The combat rifle has given us a little bit of trouble. 
But we have plenty of stuff to show in this video in substitution. For magazines, we actually do have some app options here. We have the standard mag and the large mag. And then also down here somewhere, we have a new coffin mag, which is going to be the huge capacity option for 45. But we also have some new rechambers to 556, which Pig really, really wanted. We have small, yeah. large, and of course, a drum mag, which Pig just demanded that I add into here. So we have a nice snail drum, which again, fitting that World War II aesthetic, although in a much larger size than we're used to. Yeah, the radium needed that capacity. Yeah, it, it needs a little little extra. Uh, no scopes added in the attachment pack, though, of course, you can use the West Tech Optic pack to get some more options there. And then finally, for the muzzle section, we do have quite a few things. In the base game, we have a compensator and muzzle break, and just like the other weapons in the attachment pack, we now have an advanced compensator and an advanced muzzle break, which I had a lot of fun with. Really fun addition that Pig is just in love with, that is the extra dish. So you can throw this on with a long barrel from the vanilla game to get even more cool radiation aesthetic, which I think is very, very fun. And then we also have the option for an extra deep dish, which is straight up stolen from Gamma Gun, which well, uh, both of them are. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but you get the idea. More Gamma parts for the radium rifle. Add some fun, goofy radiation aesthetic for the Children of mm -hmm. Adam. Now, moving right along, since we do have a lot to showcase, let's talk about the Harpoon Gun, because this one doesn't have a ton going on. We do have the option for one new sight, and that is a Reflex Sight, which is, uh, I believe, a mesh that Pig made for the mini gun that has been repurposed here. I think it looks pretty cool. And repositioned. and, and Yeah, it's, it's been tweaked to better fit these animations, but I think it provides a better option than the standard iron sight on this thing, which is not very accurate. But yeah. Pig also made some really cool new ammo types. So in the base game, we have the regular harpoon, the flechettes, and the barbed harpoon. But we've added some fun new stuff, including a poisoned harpoon, an electrified harpoon, a cryo harpoon, stim pack harpoon. Yes, you heard me correctly. An explosive harpoon, impact, and a proximity. And then the option to just straight up shoot a missile out of this thing, which is definitely something. It's an option. Really quick, we'll go ahead and show off some of the more unique ammo types that actually have some visual differences. And by the way, all of the newly added harpoons actually do look different when you reload the weapon. So even though you couldn't see much on the weapon's workbench, they are different when you use them. They also have unique projectiles. Yes, they also have unique projectiles, which will be showcased right now. Starting off with the impact explosives, if we shoot this at the ground here. We now have a nice kaboom every time you shoot this thing. And you'll see, if you didn't catch it the first time, that we also reload a new harpoon with a stick of dynamite attached, which is pretty cool. Uh, to match up with that, we also have the proximity explosive, which I'll shoot more over here. This one won't go off unless somebody walks near it. And as you can see, we've got some sticks of dynamite as well as a fusion cell there to help set this thing off. And then of course, the really fun one is the missile, which is just a missile. That's all there is to it. But uh, you do load a missile into the chamber, which I think looks really funny with this animation set. It works. It does work. Moving right along, we do have the Fat Man, which is another pretty simple one, since the only thing we can actually change on the Fat Man without being too intrusive on the game files is the ammo type. So we have some new ammo types that are pretty fun. The standard option, of course, is the regular old mini nuke as well as a Merv. But we have some more stuff like the Cannonball. You have a bunch of cannonballs that you have for the broadsider. Well, now you can launch them out of a fat man. We also have the mine bundle, which will launch six frag mines every time you pull the trigger. So if you've got something like a deathclaw chasing you, this will ensure that he's not going to be chasing you much longer. Just ploops them out. It, you do just ploop them out. We also have the Molotov six pack, which is going to launch six Molotov cocktails. Much better than just firing one. We also have the harpoon bundle which much mm -hmm. like the Molotov six pack fires multiple harpoons, except in this case, there's 24 of them. This is one of the, the best it's, attachments we've ever made. It's, it is one of the best attachments. This one was my idea and I'm, I'm quite proud of it. It's uh, it's a lot. We also have the missile bundle, similar to the harpoons. You get seven missiles, which turns this thing essentially into a missile shotgun, something I never thought I'd see in Fallout 4. And then we, of course, have an artillery launcher, which fires a nice artillery shell. Sort of a, a standard attachment compared to some of the other stuff we have here. Ao, Dak from the future here. Just realized while editing that I did not showcase any of the Fat Man projectiles in action. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. Starting off with the cannonball, which unlike the mini nukes does not have a huge nuclear explosion, but offers more of a direct impact projectile. 
Still has a tiny bit of explosion, but same as the vanilla cannonball in the broadsider. We also have the, I believe these are the missile pack, which is going to give you a nice shotgun spread of missiles, which is just devastating. And as you can see, they go all over the place unless you try to aim them. Still a very, very fun explosive option. After that, I believe we have the harpoon pack, which fires 24 harpoons in a shotgun style spread. And, uh... It may not have a huge impact that you can see right here, but trust me, when that hits an enemy all at once, it's pretty devastating. Or you can fire it from hip fire to hit a crowd of enemies, which is pretty fun as well. Then we have the, I believe, mine launcher here. Yes, that is going to launch out a group of mines. Typically, they don't explode. I'm going to back up a little bit so you can see. Typically, it just spreads out a group of mines, so if you're being chased by something big and scary, this should hopefully get rid of their legs and make it so they don't chase you anymore. So, that's fun. After that, we have, I believe, the Molotov launcher, the six-pack, which fires six Molotovs for a nice sort of uh, fiery spread. If you fire that a little bit closer, you can actually see them hit the ground here. Uh, be aware if they explode mid-air, that's a, a vanilla bug. They will go off like a frag grenade. So it's good to get a bit of an arc on these ones. So you can really spread the fire around. And then finally, that leaves the artillery shell, which is very similar to a mini nuke, except it has a much, well, shortened range. As you can see, it explodes pretty much in front of you. So this is going to be an interesting short range option for the fat man, but it provides a pretty hefty explosion. Something really important to note though with things like the Mine Bundle, the Molotov Pack, and the Harpoon Bundle is that these are new ammo types. You will have to craft these over at the Chemistry Station. I'll actually go ahead and show that off in game. Uh, it's a pretty simple one, nothing too crazy. It just makes it so that you can't really cheat by firing a ton of missiles for just one missiles. If you head over to the Utility section and scroll down, you will find some of these new ammo types like the Harpoon Bundle here. Since there are 24 harpoons in this bundle, it requires 24 harpoons to craft, and then an additional two adhesive for the twine that goes around it. Uh, we have yet another heavy weapon to showcase, and that is the Broadsider. Surprisingly, the Broadsider does have a few customization categories, but we didn't really do a lot for them. For the barrels and for the grips, I didn't really know what to add. For the grip section, they already have a reinforced grip, and I couldn't think of too much for the design of this weapon that really fits. So if you guys have any ideas, of course, you can leave them in the comments and maybe we can add some more to this thing. As for the barrels, I really worried about actually matching the textures of the base gun, and I just don't think I could make it look quite right. So we're going to leave those for now. But again, if you have any ideas on what we could do to improve this thing, I'd love to hear them. We do, however, have some different ammo types added in this mod. The base game offers the standard shot canister and the multi-shot canister, which just gives you some extra rounds. But we also have some new types of ammo that you can shoot, including grape shot, which turns this thing into sort of a shotgun, as well as the explosive shot canister, which adds a new explosive impact. Except I believe this one's a timed explosive, isn't it, Big? Yeah. Yeah, it's the, like an old Wiley e. Coyote bomb. Yeah, I believe the uh, the cut content from the base game has a little fuse that sticks out of it. So you would essentially light the fuse and launch this thing, and then it'll explode a few seconds later, even though the description says explosion on impact. But oh, you know how it I works. I can fix that. And with those easy ones out of the way, we finally have the last real big weapon with a lot of attachments to offer, and that is the Railway Rifle, the final weapon from the poll that went up a few days ago, which means I think it's time for a new poll after this video goes up. Uh, starting off, we have the barrel section here. In the base game, we have a short and long barrel, and that's it. We've now added the snub barrel, which was actually cut from the base game for pretty much no reason. It's in the concept art. It's not only in the concept art, it's just part of the mesh. We actually just removed the short barrel, and it's it's right there. It's right there, there the whole time. Super weird. So that's an option now if you want a lighter weight railway rifle. We also have the ignition barrel, which adds yet another incendiary module very similar to the railway rifle or the radium rifle rather. We also have an electrified barrel, which is again, very, very similar. Makes sense though for the fun railway spikes. And for both of these, Pig has created some new projectiles. The ignition barrel has some superheated railway spikes and the electrified barrel has some electrified spikes. So that's pretty cool. We also have the heavy barrel, which is a callback to Fallout 3's design, adding the piston underneath here and adds some nice accuracy and range bonuses. 
And then finally, we have the accelerated barrel, which is pretty much the peak of technology added to the railway rifle, allowing you to accelerate your railway spikes with the power of, well, this, this thing. Yeah. This it's, it's, big it's, gauss, it's a gauss thing. It's, it's a gauss yeah. rifle. I'm not a scientist. Like, we just put the parts here. The rest is sci-fi. You, you guys don't, gun. Yeah, you guys don't need to worry about that. It, it just works, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, we do have some new stock options as well. We have the standard stock, of course. We also have the salvage stock from the Fallout 3 we're, rifle. We're really getting our mileage out of this Yeah, stock. we're really, you know, it, it fits this weapon super well. It just happened to, to be that we used all of these weapons back to back. But it's uh, it, it fits. It looks nice. Yeah. We also have the comfort stock, which adds a nice little cheek pad. The gunslinger stock, much like its uh, sister attachments, has some railway spikes here to allow for faster reloading. And uh, it, it adds a nice, cool sort of vampire hunter aesthetic that I think looks yeah. really nice. And then the recoil compensating fan. stock is vanilla. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm also a big fan of this one. This one just looks so freaking cool. Yeah. It's super neat. Uh, no new sights from us, but we do have some new muzzle options. Uh, we don't. I you made, forgot to add it. I, I made them. You didn't send it to me. I didn't send them to you. Nope. Well, maybe we'll show that next week. Mm-hmm. Oops. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, Good we job. have receivers to do. Uh, yeah, we do have receivers to show off. Uh, <laughs> in the base game, we have the standard and automatic. Now we also have the heavy multi-spike receiver, which is going to convert this into a shotgun. It allows you to shoot three projectiles at once. And then we also have the 50 cal receiver. Now, I know what you're wondering. How does that work? Well, this thing lobs big spikes of metal, so why not 50 cal bullets? And I mean the entire bullet, casing and all. The, the whole thing gets shot out of here. It's not a gun. It's not going to impact the primer. It's just going to lob the entire 50 cal out, which is why it's got some pretty good damage, as it's going to be more weight than a 50 cal bullet. It's, it's more bullet per bullet. It's got 100% more bullet per bullet. Mm-hmm. Now, that pretty much does it for all of the attachment pack stuff we've been working on, which, to be fair, was quite a bit. Five new weapons are all complete in the attachment pack. We're actually kind of coming up on the home stretch, so hopefully we'll see an end to this pretty soon and uh, be able to give you guys a release date. But until then, we've also got some side projects we've been working on. You may remember the 22 pack mentioned one of the update videos a few months ago. That involved a 22 caliber machine pistol. Well, now we have the newest weapon that will be part of that mod pack, and that is the 22 pistol. Specifically, this is going to be a Ruger Mark I, and it's, uh, it's a pretty nice design. I gotta say, I'm really happy with the model on this thing. I'm not gonna show off too much of this just yet. We do have some attachments for it, but I just want to give a nice little teaser. We'll have a whole lot more to showcase next week in the mod update. Now, this is not an exact recreation of the 22 pistol from Fallout New Vegas, though it does have some attachments that allow you to mirror it pretty dang close. We wanted to sort of combine the styles of Fallout as well as the real-world weapon into something new. Now, again, this is a weapon pack, so it won't be released until all of the weapons are created, much like the attachment pack. But I still want to show off what we've been working on so you guys know that we are hard at work making some really cool stuff for you to look forward to. So, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, of course, don't forget to drop a rating. It really helps out the channel. We'll have more stuff coming up next Wednesday to show off more of the attachment pack as well as some other little goodies and a deeper look at that Ruger Mark I. Of course, you can consider subscribing if you haven't already for more videos just like this, as well as Mods Weeklies every Saturday. And as usual, a very special thank you to all of my patrons for supporting every single video as well as the mods I create. And as always, a very special shout out to Jeremy Briggs, Danny, Freedom, Glasma, Damien, Indecisive Wolf, Logan, Rig Maiden, Lord Toast, Microhan, Oscar, Scott, Sterling, Timmy76, and Youth RC, and Voider for joining that Tier 3 Patreon membership. If you'd like to support the channel over on Patreon, you can do so using the link down in the description, but it is completely optional. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace! Goblins.